Good morning, YouTube Booktube. This is Johnny. Here I am in Western Michigan. Waking up to a new day. It's slowly beginning to get over this cold. Today it is 7.14 in the morning. It is June the 20th. It's a Tuesday morning. And uh, yeah, it's the year 2023. I was looking on my calendar and tomorrow will be the first day of summer 2023. We're coming, this is the last day of spring 2023. And uh, yeah, you know, I'm always thinking about time. You know, I talked about last night, I have a timeline. Uh, I was watching a video of a, a booktuber the other day and he was talking about his his family and but there was no life narrative I mean I didn't know when this fellow was born I didn't know the years of his mother's and father's birth I didn't know anything about the years that his uncles and aunts lived it was just there was no context. There was no, no beginning and end. There was no narrative of the history of his family and like major events and their and that and that narrative. And so I always look at my life as you as you watch my videos. I I see a beginning and I see here I am next this coming August I'll be 71 years old and I'm always looking at my life from historical narrative I was born a certain year 1952 August the 14th I was born in Oakland California and you know I had a as I mentioned my mother I think we were living obviously we were living in California when I was born and uh, even though I'm, I'm not really sure where my mother was born now that I think about it I have to go back and look I have uh, a number of years ago my I got contacted with my younger sister I mentioned in my video Danielle she found me through ancestor.com anyway that's a long story but um, she sent me my mother's death certificate which I never had seen I don't know how she got it and uh, so I have that she also gave me some old photos of my mother when she married her her the, my uh, second stepfather I think I've shown those video uh, photos just recently in, in a video but when I think about historical narrative the Bible has an hysterical hysterical historical narrative and I think that's why as a Christian I think a historical narrative I think there is the beginning the book of Genesis and there's the end the book of Revelations and so you're always thinking creation new creation uh, fall uh, the, the when Adam fell Adam and Eve fell in the Garden of Eden and then you have the new Garden of Eden the paradise of God described in Revelations and you think about in the middle of a historical narrative the history of redemption you think of the cross of Christ who brought in the new eschaton the new age with the coming of Christ there was a break in the historical narrative because not only did Christ save the new humanity but he brought in he he broke the power of sin he overthrew the tyranny of Satan he he conquered death and he brought in this eternal kingdom of glory and so I'm always thinking historical narrative so I'm always thinking of the beginning and the end <laughs> and I'm always thinking that uh, life is so so quickly over you know it's like you're born and then you die but you don't we never cease to exist we have any, we have a soul that will live forever and when you think about 
the, uh, you think about that, then you think about how important it is not to focus on the material or the physical, but on the spiritual, that there are those spiritual realities are the true realities. And that's what, when I was, um, yesterday when I read from 2 Corinthians, where it says, um, for our light affliction, this is in chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, that's our life. <laughs> you know, life is one of suffering. Life is difficult. Life is, there are afflictions and sufferings. There are ups and downs. There are hard times and good times. There are dark times and in times of sunshine there is spring and then there is winter for our light affliction which is but for a moment is working everything that happens in our lives is working for our good it's it's part of our sanctification is how god molds us and shapes us and and brings us to that place of recognizing our need of him and how he is uh making us more Christ-like is working for us a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory while we do not look at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal and that's the thing that I always try to keep in my mind as I go through the day, as I wake up in the morning, what's really important? I quote this verse this morning in my, this verse always is on my mind when I wake up in the morning and why I have devotions. It says in Colossians, Colossians is in the New Testament, it's a Pauline epistle. He says, Uh, Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 if then you were raised with Christ see when Christ died on the cross on the third day he rose again from the dead and when he ascended when he rose from the dead we who are Christians who, who are united to him mystically by faith we are we are part of the body of Christ and when he was raised from the dead we are now raised with him. We have this guarantee and assurance that we have been raised with Christ. And there'll come a day, the last day, the day of judgment, the resurrection, when we will be raised from the dead bodily and given a body that it will be immortal and that will be able to inhabit the new creation. He says, if you, if you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on the things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you, you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in, in which you, you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off these, these, th off these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth, do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge according to the image of God, the image of him who created you. So, you know, I keep up those verses when I wake up in the morning and I have devotions. I, I set my mind on things that are eternal. I've been mentioning uh, the the uh, the love of Christ, which are expository 
sermons on verses of the Song of Solomon in chapters 4 through 6 by Richard Sibbs, who was an, a 17th century English Puritan. Like I said, he lived from 1577 to 1635. And last night, I, th I thought what I would do this morning and make this video showing you the works of Richard Sibbs. These are the works of Richard Sibbs. And this is, there are seven volumes. Uh, this is, and, uh, This is the the first first volume, and in the first volume is his famous work. Uh, it's called the Bruised Reed and the Smoking Flax. That's what he's. Uh, this was uh, the Banner Truth, which comes out of English. They published the Bruised Reed in a paperback, the Puritan paperback, and I thought I had it in a paperback, but <clears throat> I don't have it. But. That's what, in volume one uh, of, uh, also in volume one is the memoir, <coughs> the memoir of Richard Sibbs. And then you have the smoking flax, and you have like the soul's conflict in, chap in uh, volume one of his works. It's the Puritans, they have long titles for their works. Let me see, I was going to find the, the whole title of The Soul's Conflict. Yeah. So, yeah, The Soul's Conflict with Itself and Victory Over Itself by Faith, a treatise on the inward disquietness of distress spirits with comfortable remedies to establish them. So that's in volume one of the works of Richard Sibbs. And then... You have in volume two. Volume two is uh, has the sermons on that is in this in this volume. Uh, it's called the Bowels Opened or Expository Sermons on the Canicle, Canicles, which is the Song of Solomon, four sixteen five in chapter six. The bowels opened, and uh, you notice that in all these works, I have, <laughs> I have uh, bookmarkers, my index cards are in each volume, because I've I've been, these were first published in this set was published in 1979, and I've been reading them. I think they came out individually after a while. I don't think they all came out, out at one time. And I bought them over a period of time. But the first volume came out in 1979. And then I think this one came out in... What's this one came out? This one came out in 1983. Which has the expository sermons on the Song of Solomon. And it also has... Uh, a treatise called The Breathing of God. I have I noticed that my index marker was on that. Uh, it's called The Spouse, Her Earnest Desire After Christ. And then it has Breathing After God. A Breathing After God or A Christian's Desire of God's Presence. And that's where my uh, index card is. Also, there's a treatise, The Returning of the Backslider. Uh, which is very famous too, treatise by Richard Sibbs. Uh, a Returning of the Backslider. Uh, it's on that text in Hosea, uh, verse chapter 14, 1 and 2. O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thy iniquity. Take with you words, and turn to the Lord. Say unto him, Take away all iniquity. So then you have that. And then you have volume three of the works, works of Richard Sibbs. Uh, where my marker, my index card is on. This is in, 
Volume 3 is an exposition on the 2nd Corinthians chapter 1. It's a commentary on 2nd Corinthians chapter 1 uh, in this volume. And then you have volume 4, which came out in, what year did this one come out? Uh, 1983, uh, the Christian's portion or the Christian's charter. And my index card is on a treatise called uh, Excellency of the Gospel Above the Law, wherein the liberty of the sons of God is showed with the image of their graces here and glory hereafter. That's where my index card card is above ecstasy of the gospel above the law in chapter uh, volume four of the works of Richard Sibbs and then see this is a different color so you can tell it was I think this was one of the earlier ones this one came out in 1977 in the exposition of St. Paul I think what they did they realized that people really wanted the, the works of Richard Sibbs. So then Band of Truth decided, let's just re Now what this is, back in the 19th century, there was a fellow who published a whole series of Puritan reprints and uh, from the 17th century. He, you know, they're like a reprint. And I have, I think I told you, I have a set of that that was published in the 19th century. I'll show you that in a, this, a video this week of a set that these are all taken from. They, they just kind of like, it's a photocopy. I don't know how they do it exactly, but it's, I think, am I even saying here where, where they're from? Uh, <clears throat> no, it doesn't say it, but um, yeah, here it is. <clears throat> I get it. I still got the sickness. It says, Publisher's Preface in here. The volume here reprinted was first published in 1863 as volume 5 of the Complete Works of Richard Sibbs in the Nichols series of Standard Divine Period and Period. Volume 1 of the same series was reprinted by a present publishers in 1973 under the title, The Works of Richard Sibbs. The Nichols edition of Sibbs, which due to com competence of the editor, A.B. Gozart, is a standard and definitive edition, contains seven volumes in all. As we indicated in reprinting volume one, the reissue of all seven volumes is not currently planned, but steady demand from volume one has encouraged us to proceed with another. This volume was chosen partly because it contains in short work some of the finest Sibs exposition of Paul, and because at the same time it provides the characteristically rich Puritan handling of many of the most important areas of practical divinity. So, like you have in here, they're, dip, they're, little, like, they're almost like little treatises. You have the art of contentment, and my index card is on the Christian's Inn, which is the first sermon. The Christian's Inn, or the sweet sovereignty of Christ over his members in life and death. And then I have volume six, the works of Richard Sibbs. This was also published in... Nineteen eighty-three, and my index card is on a treatise, an exposition on. Uh, oh no, the church's complaint and competence. The church's complaint and competence in three sermons. That's where my index card is. So, and I. Uh, You yeah, have Josiah's Reformation is in here in volume 6. Josiah was one of the kings of Israel. The Saints Refreshing. 
spiritual favorite at the throne of grace, the saints' comfort, a rescue from death with a return of praise. These are like little sermons. The matchless love and in being. That's one of my favorite ones. I think it's about union with Christ and spiritual mourning, rich property or the poor man's riches. You know, just really excellent little Puritan works. And then you have in volume seven, my index card is on the witness of salvation in volume seven of the works of Richard Sibbs. So, yeah, I've been reading Richard Sibbs like from the late 70s. That, and I told you I've been reading this, The Love of Christ. A good way to, this is a good book, Meet the, the Pure. The Meet the Puritans with a Guide to Modern Reprints by Joel R. Beakey and Randall J. Painted Peterson. There's a whole little biographical sketch in here on Richard Sibbs. That's this is a good book. They're gonna do a new reissue of this because they uh Beakey and Reformation Heritage are have been reprinting uh, Puritan works, and they're going to update on this. Another good book is A Puritan Theology, A Doctrine for Life by Joe R. Beakey and Mark Jones. There's a chapter in here uh, on Richard Sibbs, uh, entertaining, the, entertaining the Holy Spirit, chapter 36. That's where my index card is. I read this uh, what I read this for devotions at least over you know over the years it's really excellent if you're into the Puritan theology the doctrine of life I can't go into it more because I've already been going over 20 minutes and I'm afraid this thing's going to shut down any moment so I just thought I'd show you the works of Richard Sibbs that's why I told you you know you could I talked about getting rid of stuff well you, Right here, I have enough to, to read for the last you know, 19 years. I have over 2,000 Puritan works. I have the works of Thomas Goodman, the works of Thomas Matton, the works of John Owen. It just goes on and on. I have Puritan volumes. Because uh, I've mentioned that for many years, I just read the Puritans. I think for 25 years, that's all I read every day. I read the Puritans. And once in a while, I read secular books like a novel by Updike or a novel by Saul Billows or Philip Roth or, or I read Kerouac or William Burroughs or Allen Ginsberg. But for many years, I just read Reformed Systematic Theology, the Puritans, commentaries, because I, was, uh, I didn't have the time. I was working, raising a family, going to school, going to college, going to seminary. And uh, I was involved in, in teaching adult Sunday school, you know, in writing, and I didn't have time to read American history or biography or le letters by uh, or travel narratives or anything. So I hope you have a good day. I'm supposed to get some books in the mail today, in my Father's Day books that I use with Amazon gift card. So this morning I'm going to read, like I said, I, I'm going to read the Puritan Theology, the chapter on Richard Sibbs entertaining the Holy Spirit. Uh, Richard Sibbs on entertaining the Holy Spirit. So I hope you have a good day. This is 24 minutes. This is going to shut down. I thank you for your comments. This is a Tuesday. Tomorrow's the first day of summer. 2023 and I'll download this video and tomorrow morning or maybe a, even tonight I might make another video something different since Carol's out west and I'm by myself it's supposed to be 90 degrees today so I have the house shut up and the central air system blowing in writing in my diary I'm on page 517 for the year 2023 if you want to read about my life, go to Live Journal Crooked Fingers, and I'll sign off. Until next time, and may the Lord bless.